Well, well, my name is Carlos, and I have here uh, Dave Dockin. He's the owner of Coralview, and we're going to give you a little presentation about our new product uh, coming out this today. Yeah, exactly, or at least released today. Right. All right. So, Hydros has been around for a while, and about uh, five years, and uh, we. It was just a, a control that we wanted to do something simple, something easy, something that everybody could use. Yeah. So I'm gonna let Dave kind of give you a little history of Coralview and then we'll just kick right through to it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's been about uh, 22 years now in business and I uh, started Coralview Manufacturing and then along the way kind of progressed into distributing products and, but uh, the manufacturing was, and it was always uh, the key. It was my background in electronics, and and uh, so we really wanted to to build something. <clears throat> excuse me, that that was unique. Uh, we felt was easy to use, um, intuitive. But uh, I think that's what we we've come up with, and uh, we're going to continue to expand on it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more in the in the work. So at this show, we're releasing three new products and kind of give you a rundown through each of those. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Hydros is an option. Yeah. Whether you choose to use it or not, it's up to you. You're the one that makes the decision. You're the one that buys the car, you know, different car. Everybody likes different things. So we're not here to tell you Hydros is the only thing or that Hydros is great and the other ones are bad or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, it's you make that decision of what you want to do because at the end of the day, you're the one using it and you have a certain purpose or right? you buy equipment based on the application not the application for the equipment. So it's just, it's an option. And um, if you like it, great. If you, if you don't like it, we're not gonna take it personally, you know? <laughs> but uh, you know, we're always around in case, you know, you change your mind. And uh, so let's get started here. Um, go ahead. So the first product is the minnow. I think one of the biggest things that we've had is people asking for a way to dose. And we had that X10 come out. And the X10 has the four dosers. It's a com complete brain. But a lot of people are asking, is like, why can't we just have a, a simple doser, something, something easy that I can use? And that's kind of like the minnow. In terms of, um, um, you want the price is 249 Okay, and let's keep going. <laughs> All right, go to the next slide. All right, so the minnow, compatible with fresh water and salt water. I think a lot of times now we are just kind of locked into the salt water. So remember, if we all have, you know, a salt water tank, and I think some of us are dabbling or kind of getting into the fresh water, minnow works for both. Go ahead. Okay. The one thing about the minnow, and I think you'll find out from every single controller of hydros, is that they are actual brains. They work by themselves. Standalone, standalone controllers. Yes, you can use them. And in a collective, what we call with a whole, with many devices, or you can use it as a as a alone. You don't need a brain because the minnow itself is a brain. It's a very small device, as you can see, six by six and a quarter by two and a half. And with every single Hydros device, you get this industrial grade look. All right, so it's built for the environment. Okay, it's got O-ring seals, in it's got the IP65 rating. Um, so you can, it's built for. It's built for the environment. Exactly. You know, we, we're in a hostile environment in, in our aquariums. Right. You can control up to four sensors. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I wanted to say, Dave, is that we have universal sensors, which means that you get to choose what you're going to plug into that sensor, whether it's a leak detector, whether it's a TDS meter, whether it is um, a temperature sensor, you plug it in and then on the app, you tell it what it is. So today I need a temperature sensor. In three months, I'm gonna need a leak detector. I can just switch it around and tell the app and it's all done. You don't have to buy a different module for different applications. So like, since I'm brand new to type it, so does probes go on sensors or would probes go on something like a PA probe? A probe is a, it, it's, it's a, it would be into a probe, a probe because it's got a BNC, BNC connector. All right. So you can connect up to four sensors, as we said. Yep. And also look at the command bus you'll see on there. So with our command bus, you can actually link this with other controllers. 
You can also carry power as well as data through that command bus. Correct. Now you have also two dosing pumps and they set, they run at set speeds. You don't have, you can't change the speed to a custom speed. You have 25, 40 and 55 milliliters. You can run them in reverse or you can run them in forward. So whichever you want to do. Um, <clears throat> as everybody knows here, yes, please. Quick question, because you're saying you can run them forward and reverse. Yes. Do I sense water change? <laughs> Actually, you can, you can, the, the Hydros app allows you to do water changes, so however you want to do. Um, yeah, but these are not continuous uh, dosing pumps. These are, uh, these are like server motor. Okay. They're not, they're not really, it's not really rated. Server, yes. Pushing that out of fluid. Yeah, or like continuously. Or I would, you could do that, yeah. But a large volume, I, I wouldn't recommend that. And look at something like the X10 that has continuous use parastolic pumps on it. Yeah. The application allows you to pretty much use any pump you want to. So you can use multiple pumps. So you don't have to use a hydros pump. You can use a regular dosing pump if you want, or you can use a regular pump as long as you have a way to vent it, you know. All right, so the hydros app, easy to use. You know, everything is uh, intuitive. It's a WYSIWYG, so it's a form. You grab the form, you fill it up. Uh, there is no advanced programming. Six months from now, you want to change something, you can just go look at the form again. And, and then for service accounts, it's great because you can send different people and they'll be able to pick it up and use it without having somebody to have the expertise or knowing the system completely because you don't want them to make a change and make a mistake. So it makes it super, super easy. All right. Every, the, the price is $249, which I think is pretty competitive. Yeah. Other pumps with two heads. I always say, people say, well, we should have more heads. Well, we say, buy another. Yeah. You can link them together with that command bus, one power source. So makes it pretty easy yeah. to add more. Is there a limit with the command bus power source? Does a limit to? How many you can basically chain together? Well, is there? No, I mean, we've had, we have 13, we've got, 14 devices. Yeah. I, I probably have over 30 on my system. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to the next. So now the big product, the one, one of the biggest products we yeah. have today here, it's the launch and it's actually on sale yeah. now. Yeah. So you can purchase it. You can't purchase it from us, but you can purchase it from, from retailers right mm -hmm. here. So good. So the launch, Dave, kind of, yeah, this, let's the, tell them about what the, the launch was kind of just born out of, you know, people look at all of the controllers we had and they didn't know where to start. Mm -hmm. They were kind of overwhelmed, like, well, yeah, I don't know where to start with this. And, and this was kind of our answer to this is where you can start. You know, you put this in somebody's hand and it's they can wrap their mind around. They see the AC plugs, they see pH, uh, salinity. Um, so it's a little bit of everything. And it's a good it's a launch into the hydros world. Mm -hmm. And that's why we came with this one. All right. So that supports the IP salinity? Salinity as well, yes, sir. The only other one, right, is the X10. Correct. X10 does as well. Yeah, so uh, with the competitors, one of the biggest frustrations that I have is with the salinity testers, specifically for the way that it does have salinity. Mm -hmm. Being new and looking at hydros, do you guys perform the same type of salinity test or? Do you have a higher reliability? It's done with a probe. Now we use uh, the, every probe, going back to equipment based on applica or the application, you buy the correct equipment for the application. So we have a probe that has a K factor of 10. Now the K factor is, not every probe is created the same. A K factor will give you what the application is. So the lower the K factor, the less uh, conductivity you're measuring. So fresh water, has a very, you know, use a low K factor. Salt water, and then you have waste. So waste will have a really high K factor. So we actually have a probe that was built for using in salt water. So it's a K factor of 10. Um, also, we have the IV, which allows you to, it's a little contraption that we have that allows you to pull the water out of your tank and bring it into this, into the, into this beaker, which is isolated. So if there's any type of stray voltage that would often interfere with the readings from the, from the probe in the tank, that would be pretty much mitigated. 
And the IV device does need an external controller with pumps to function, correct? You would, you would, well, with the Hydros device, you can use an X10, or you can use a couple of, you know, $40, $50 pumps. We, the software gives you the opportunity. We're not locking you into, you have to use this equipment to use this feature. So we don't do that. Sorry. So, so just meant the AIX doesn't have a mode inside of it for popping. Yes, no, it right. doesn't. Yeah. But you could use something like the uh, minnow to do that, right. bring water in and out. We also uh, isolate the, the circuitry for the salinity. Yes. yes. So it's actually, it doesn't sit on the main board. Um, that isolation, pulling it away, uh, prevents a lot of electrical noise that you may hear or see through the, the, the actual circuit, which translates to a, a, a wrong uh, salinity value. All right, so great, going back to launch, great way to start the system. As you can see, we have a little drawing in here of, of what could be a uh, typical aquarium with the launch. It's actually a pretty powerful device. Uh, even though it has four ACs, and I'll get to that a little bit later. So, all right. Small, you know, nine, five, four and three quarters, and pretty much 3.6. And again, with the hydros, you got that industrial grade look. Now, obviously, this device is not IP65 because of the four AC outlets oh. in there, but you can always put caps or, you know, to keep it from the humidity, at least minimize that. All right, we have up to uh, four sensors, the green port. So again, those universal sensors, you always need them. We're always looking for, you know, anytime you add equipment, I'm out of places to put temperature sensor or water sensor. So we got those, uh, can control up to four 12 volt devices. And I think that's key, because a lot of times people think that just because you have four AC outlets, you're not gonna cover that much. But think about it, out of, in our tanks, on our tanks, we have, 12 volt devices, little lights, little pumps, uh, ATO. So those now, you don't have to put them on an AC outlet. So I don't have to waste a AC outlet on a small, tiny little pump. I can put them on a drive board. You can do the same thing with lights on the cabinet lights and so forth. Those again, free up AC outlets. So once you take those out of the equation, then you got your heater, your skimmer, your return pump. Now you have a little more options. So while this has only four AC outlets with the 12 volts, it actually makes it a more powerful device and you're not locked in into just four things, okay? Um, it also has, let's go back one. All right. Conductivity probe and it has the um, uh, pH probe and it has a zero to 10 volt input. Now, that one's actually kind of a funny thing for me because I was trying to figure out how can we make things easy? And some people were in within the company were like, do we put a zero to 10 volt out or in? Mm -hmm. You know, they want to, we want to control the lights, we want to control things and, or pump. But at the same time, we're thinking we travel all the time. We travel all the time and easy, easy, easy. How about a button box? Yep. How about a button box? And the reason why is because I'm here and my wife is at home. Now let's be real, my wife, I love her, but she just puts up with my hub. She puts up with it. So when she get, when at, right now she feeds the tank, she just presses a button, that's it. The last thing I wanna do is give my wife the app and then she pushes a button and then we all have fat fingers and we end up pushing something else. And then she gets upset, calls me and it's like, I did something and then I end up paying for it. So in the, in, Trying to make things easy, the button box seemed like a better choice. If you want a zero to 10 volt output, then you can purchase a different device. You get more advanced. But I think the button box is a pretty, to me, it seems yeah. like an easy way. And it's a, it's a wife approved. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As I covered the four AC outlets already, um, you have a, a eight amps per outlet and the total draw could be 14 amps. So you still have a pretty, pretty robust connector there. Yep. Uh, I, use that I use a lot of optical sensors. Mm -hmm. it, in your knowledge, you got a temperature? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yes, it is a green sensor. Yep. Because anything that is giving you an input, anything that is giving the controller information is a sensor. Yeah. And, and do you have anything equivalent to your better causal uh, liquid 
it tells you the level of the liquid, it actually, actually gives you a numeric value of the E-tape. Oh, the E-tape. Okay. You know, I, we, we, do, we do not, but actually there is, a, with a zero to 10 volt input, there is, uh, people have done it already. And they have done, they have actually adapted it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So while we don't have it, the zero to ten volt input, it's a pretty, pretty powerful thing. Go ahead. Um, so again, being new to the hydro system, one of the things that, that I was researching off of the get go was compatibility with the zero to ten volt with different lighting systems and mm -hmm. other things. I wasn't able to easily find a non do it yourself kind of mechanism for hooking up to Tesla lights or something similar. Are you guys expanding on the adapter cables that you have to take other brands into consideration? You know, we're always open. We're always open. We're always open. I mean, we have the 3.5 millimeter jack, the mono, the mono jack, or the, um, but we're always open. The thing about it is that there's no standard for it. So you kind of, while the zero to 10 itself is pretty generic and universal, uh, different companies choose different plugs to do it. Yeah, so we're always open to that. So just send us an email. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next. As with the minnow, same thing with the app. No program, no, no advanced programming. You don't, you don't have to write any code. You don't have to Google code to figure out how to do something. It just, there's a WYSI week that walks you through the process. Can you code? Do you allow code? We don't. But that's because our, our WYSIWYG, our, our forms can do that, can do pretty complicated without getting too, too technical. You can do AND and ORs, you can do nested statements, you can do it within that. Yes, 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 exactly. I mean, when I'm using a phone, I don't have to code on my phone. I can, you know, there's many things that you can do. So if you wanted to set up, again, do what competition, I had to set up custom alarms. Yes. You can do that too. Yeah, yeah, custom. I mean, yeah, come on over mm -hmm. and we'll give you the tour. Yeah, come on over. If you like it, great. If you don't, you know. All right, next one. Retail price, five forty nine dollars which I think is a pretty good price, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's in here? pH probe and the temperature probe. Does not include the salinity or conductivity probe. You can get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, moving on, huh? Moving on. And then we have the Maven. The Maven. And yes, this is a 3D rendering. <laughs> All right, so Dave, tell me what. Yeah, you know, we, we've been involved with, with water testing devices uh, for quite some time at Coral View. We've distributed quite a few of them, and uh, it, it's, they're, they're difficult. They're, to everything that's been out, we've, we've battled with, um, with service, uh, with functionality, um, to the point we just said, hey, we can do something, we can do something better. For me, the biggest thing in a water testing machine was serviceability, that the consumer could easily access the cuvee where the test has taken place, clean it, replace it, um, easily access the tubes, the, there's pinch valves inside. Everything is, is really simple. I mean, the, the machine is, is really easy to work on and service. What you see on the front is, uh, the cuvee holder is that black dome piece. It's actually held on with magnets. So it's, it's simple to, to remove it. You see it there. Um, there's actually, uh, all of the electronics, the, there's optics inside of it. So there's no electronics on the outside of the cuffe. It actually has a reflection in it that goes back to the sensor that reads the, the water, uh, titration. So the, the whole thing still keeps its, uh, its IP65 rating. That thing could take a wall of water and it's still going to keep working. It's also a full controller. Um, yeah. It's not just a, a, a water testing machine. You'll also see our similar drive port and sense ports on it. You can control up to eight Wi-Fi 
uh, devices. So uh, you know, we we think it's uh, it's it's going to be a pretty popular device. And for me, it was like it it has to work. It, it has to it, it has to be something that is reliable. And uh, I, I think we have it. You know, I just want to give it some more time before it we put it out there and, you know, we want to do some more testing and, and, uh, but it's here, it's working. Um, Does it have the, will it have the, um, intelligence to make dosing decisions? Yeah. That is the hydros controller. Yeah. That is. So, so you can actually, well, you have this machine and, uh, we'll just, yeah, well, you have this machine. This is a, uh, brain, it's by itself, you don't have to purchase anything else, but then the information can be transferred to another Hydros brain like mm -hmm. the X10, and then the Hydros itself, the brain, the app will tell you, allow you to program things. So you can dose whatever you want. Let's say your calcium is low. Yes. It will, it would tell the Make. brain mm -hmm. that you need to dose. It'll everything. tell another brain that you need yeah. to dose. You'll be able to say here's how much I should dose over the next mm -hmm. four hours. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yes, correct. All right. So um dimensions, eleven by nine and a half by four and a quarter. It's not it's it's not a small thing. So I'm not gonna say it's a small thing, but it's definitely not something big that will sit in there on the counter. As you can see with the device here, you also have um uh, brackets to mount, which makes it a lot easier, you know. So on to the next one. Uh there's one more question. Oh two questions here, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Not the only thing that I think people are going to be replacing, or at least is the cuvee. The cuvee. Because, you know, after so much time with the chemicals, it does get a little bit, um, starts to, you know, discolor. discolor. But we, because of that, we made it very, very easy. I mean, you can take the cuvee within 30 seconds and mm -hmm. you can. You could change it and pop a new one in there. Um, serviceability inside when you, you can get inside the unit with only six screws. And then after that, you're in. And everything inside is actually mounted on a uh, metal bracket that you took, you take two screws out of the metal bracket and you can pull the whole metal bracket out with everything inside. So you don't even have to work within the confines of the box. You can take it out. The metal bracket holds everything and then you put it back in. So in terms of serviceability, we made it as simple as we could. All right, it also contains two sensors and two power 12 volt devices. So you can run two, uh, two pumps, two dosing pumps if you wanted to. So even now you don't have to, if you want something as simple as alkalinity, you can, this will do it by itself with a, what is it, a $60 dosing? 60. $60 yeah, dosing pump in there. And the app will do the brain. You can tell it what to do and everything. You know, if you want something a little more expand, you know, more than just two doses, then you get, different things, but the options are there. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, that's the cuvette that we we're talking about. So you pull that out and the cuvette's right there. And if you can see right here, this part right there, that's where the, what we call the lid, and that separates the cuvette where the water is from all the electronics inside. So statistically, the thing that is going to you know, overflow the most is the one that is actually completely isolated from the electronics inside. It'll just drip down and then gravity will bring it down. So you won't have to worry about, you know, rusting or causing a short inside. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, we use pinch valves and uh, there is a pump inside, a dosing pump is a microdoser. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that we've done is we put in an air pump in there. It's a pretty strong air pump. It's tiny, but it's, it's a thick. micro air pump. Yeah, it's a micro air pump. And what that does is at the beginning of the test, it'll blow out the lines. And at the end of the test, it'll blow out the lines too. So that you're not, so that there's no reagent that stays within the yeah. uh, device, within there, the lines. There's no cross-contamination between and, and, the And also the reagent doesn't get dry. Yep. Yes. I just think of competitors like they have um, like their, their line, their, their sample line. You can't modify that in any way, shape, or form. You can't cut it short. You can't, if it gets even kinked a little bit, it messes up the entire test. Yes. Is, are, 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 is your, the way this is pulling its sample line, 
can those lines be shorter? Can it be longer? Is there Absolutely. restrictions? So the restrictions is you cannot cut the reagent lines. The reagent lines are set. Okay. They are set, and that's how we do the self-priming, because we know the length of the line. Now, in terms of the intake, you don't have to do that. You can, you can, as in you are able to cut. On the app, you'll be able to tell it how long the line is. Mm -hmm. Everything within reason. So you don't want to run it like 50 feet because that's going to take a long time. Yeah, to to, more, yes. Yes. Move yes. that up like higher above the tank just to keep everything yeah. up in a shell. Yep. And let's just say, for example, I want to extend that line Correct. five feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. so You'll put it lower down and not have 10 feet of line down. Correct. There. You'll notice we, we don't use RODI line. We actually use a very small line. Yep. So the smaller the line, the distance we can do and less water inside. Uh, we'll have all that on the documentation and the instructions, but just to kind of simply answer, yes, you can do that within reason. And then that the blowout that you're talking about, is it blowing out like all the reagents and the sample line? Yes, yep. yes, yes. So we do that. Uh, another thing that we use the pump is also is to agitate mm. the reagents. Yep. So we agitate the reagents. As we are testing, we will go ahead and uh, um, uh, send air agitates the reagent. So we're not, we're not locking you into a schedule of you got to run a test uh, certain every day. Or... You're kind of going into my next question. I think you are. I, I see some things where it says that uh, Battery's dead. you can yeah. test as little or as often as you want. So you That's correct. So let's say, for example, if yeah. I just wanted to test, like, so let's just say an alkaline to be calcium magnesium, let's just say once a day. Is mm -hmm. it possible? Yes. And let's say I want to do phosphate and uh, once a week. Yes, yeah, so yes. So I can literally space it out, and so that will prolong the life of the reagent. Absolutely, and by blowing that, agitating that reagent. But remember, everything again is within reason. Yeah. Once you crack that reagent open, it's got a lifespan. It's got a lifespan. Yeah. So you don't think of, oh, I can test calcium and magnesium once a month, and that reagent is going to last you three years. That doesn't have, I mean, there's no way. We are still kind of like, we're, we don't want to release that information yet because we don't want to kind of commit to it. But yeah, so let's go to the next slide. And that's kind of like answering that next question is that you can test as frequently as you want. You can test, you don't have to test everything. So I don't have to, I'm not going to force you to test you know, calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity, all of them at the same time, or, you know, when you do a test, you can test however you want. The one thing is calcium and magnesium are, are one test with two results. So you can't just test for calcium. When you test for calcium, you'll get calcium and magnesium. How do you all make sure the reagent is stirred or ready for testing at all times? Say that again? How do you all make sure the reagent is stirred and ready for testing? We use the agitation, that air pump that I just, uh, that we talked about. We, every time before test, we, when we blow the lines, we also agitate the reagent by using the airline. So I know kind of the seven bottles of reagents. Yes. What about calibration? Oh, calibration? <laughs> <laughs> it's self-priming, but we will give you the option of calibrating the unit if you want to, but it's self-priming. The thing about calibration is that you need calibration when you're using multiple pumps. But when you're using the same pump, makes it a lot easier because we're using pinch valves so the same pump if the, if the pump is off then it's off for the salt water it's off for the reagent so everything is according and we're using a, and we're using ratio instead of i thought calibration was required because of differences between one bottle of reagent versus the next bottle okay so now you're talking about what, what we terminology we, we we call it an offset mm -hmm. offset so you are like, let's say you came, you're measuring 7.5 and you change reagents and now the measurement is 7.4. I'm not going to go through the pro I'm not going to make you go through the process of calibrating the entire machine at that point because of the discrepancy. All you do is there's a little offset and you offset. Yeah. 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 Yes. So go to the next slide, please. Um, here they are. Here you go. <laughs> um, were you guys here before? Because it seems like asking the question. Yeah, awesome. um, we use proprietary uh, reagents. And the reason is because 
we want to have control over the reagents themselves. Yes, um, you know, the other companies, testing companies, they're, they are reliable, they're great reagents, but when you don't have control over it, if there's any changes or discrepancies in the formula, then it throws it off and it just makes it harder. So we wanted to have that. We also wanted to control the um, availability as well oh. in terms of having it available because we had, you know, sometimes I can't find certain tests and then the machine is pretty much dead in the water because I can't find that test. Uh, we offer that. Uh, one question that comes out real a lot is how many tests can I get from those bottles? And usually it's about 100 tests. Now, in terms of pricing on the reagent, we don't have that yet. We'll, come, we'll release that soon. But I think you'll find it quite affordable to, to run. How about the price? No. Yeah, the unit itself, if we come up with the price. Closer. We, don't have the, we haven't set the price yet, uh, but we'll do that pretty shortly. Not the unit itself. The unit itself? Yes. Uh, 1,200. Yep. All right, well, thanks for that one. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I think we have a Q, it's been a Q&A yeah. all the time, so yeah. go ahead. I think lighting. Lighting. Yeah. 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 Lighting. And you can take that for you can take that for whatever you want. <laughs> Any other questions? Go ahead. So those that are not mechanically designed for whatever reason, will you have some kind of service? Absolutely. 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 Again, you, we want you to have options. That's the whole game is options. If you are mechanically inclined and you do it yourself, you can do it yourself. If you don't like it, then you can. If you can, or you don't want to, don't have time, you can set it. But we'll have option is we'll have videos on what yes. to do, and it's it's really simple. He says we have videos and how to do it and everything simple for everybody. Go ahead, James. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Forgot we, about that. We'll do two tests and. The reason why it's not, the reason for that, it wasn't the two tanks. I have one and that's enough for me, it's too much work. But I do have, and Dave installed a sulfur reactor. So we wanted, testing sulfur reactor was just too hard and testing twice and all that. Yeah. And we're like, let's add a second one. So the second test is for you to be able to do something like a calcium reactor or a sulfur reactor. Yeah, obviously you can do a second tank, but it's also for that. I mean. But stopping you from it. Uh, let's go to with that. Hold on, James. Go to the back. The talent might so different. You know, it's a different thing because, and it comes down to economics. All right, the IV, it, the price per test will be so small compared to the price per test on this machine in terms of alkalinity. So if you're looking to test every two hours, every three hours, I'll probably say go with the IV. If you're kind of like the person that just wants to test alkalinity once a day or maybe once a week, then, then this will be just fine. So again, it's not, it's not that this is bad, it's just a different application, different application. James, go ahead. When it comes to the bottles, 250 milliliters, well, we don't have any sensors. The machine and the application will keep track of how many tests you have, so that it'll tell you when you're running low. You know, it's not going to tell you you're empty because we really don't know, but it'll tell you, hey, you may want to check. Right. Go ahead. Uh, when you guys are talking about the being able to test two tanks, so does that have the ability, like, for two sample lines? Yes. Mm -hmm. so, and is it limited to just two? Yes. Yeah, it's limited to. Yeah, so, oh. in my thing on that, you can, with the dosing pumps that you have, you can have multiple dosing pumps, multiple brain, all in a collective, and let's say, for example, do both my tanks with one machine. Correct. Because you're creating different dosing scheduled the dosing regimens, so you tie the dosing regimens to the inputs for tank one, and, it's, and the B dosing regimen to the inputs from tank B. So it gives you that versatility. Yes. When it tests the alkalinity with the major versus the IV, are they the same type of reagents, or is there two different methods of testing? Great, great question. They're different reagents. They're going to be different reagents. 
Okay, so you can't you can't use one or the other. Go ahead. So you're gonna track the uh, the test kind of like the pH where you can see a graph. Mm -hmm. On the IV, it does no because there is no pH probing. If it's test. Yes. Oh, graphing. Graphing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. There's a graph and there's also a log where you can actually see the test and every every test and what happened. And also the log helps. If there's an error, then it'll do. Um, in terms of, you know, one of the features that we did, and, and I'll give, uh, one of the features that we did with the Maven is the lights, the LEDs. On anybody that is a Hydros user, the LEDs, they're there because they're fun, but there's also, there certain colors mean certain errors. On the on the Maven, it'll be the same thing. The the lights around the unit are going to give you a status. So if you look at the lights around, as soon as the st uh, test starts, it starts at one o'clock, and the light starts to light up as the as the test progresses. You see the light went up, so you can visually see how close you are to ending the test or you know beginning of the test. Uh, hold on, there's one a question right here before, sir. Sample one, is it returned to the tank? No, 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 no. These are different chemicals, so this goes into a waste container. Yes. Yeah, no, 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 no. It does not. It does not. There's one other test. Say that again? We'll release that a little bit later. Because I mean, if I tell you right now, it's just better to read it. Yeah, we will release that later. Go ahead. Yes. If you have a test and it just like an anomaly of the test, you have a big profile of the traps, and then it does an automatic test to see if it's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you have that function. We have it with the IV, and on top of that, with the function, just like the KH Guardian, you can actually specify when you want that to trigger. Trust me, I mean, out of everybody here, I think uh, I've used the KH Guardian, the Alcatronic, the KH Carer, the. Uh, what was the other Master one? The Mastertronic. I mean, it, Reef Bot. I mean, I've used, I probably, there's very few people that have have had every single machine. And uh, because we are Coral Beam with distributors, we've actually done with those machines. So while we are just releasing our own, we've been working with, with uh, testing machines for a very, very long time. And, and as distributors, we also do the support and the repair for it. So we did. And uh, so we've learned from, a lot of machines. Yeah, I think the only machine, you know, that I have not, that we have not, that I have not personally used but have access to it is one. Mm -hmm. That's it. One machine. There's one other test. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Yes. And the other test is a simple water, water clarity test. Yeah. You know, since we have an electric eye a photometer, then there is one test where you bring in water in and it'll just uh, look at the, the clarity, the clarity yes. of the water. And then it'll give you a suggestion as to, okay, the, you can put a range, and if it's outside that range, you may want to trigger an ozone or carbon. Or carbon. You know, yeah. It'll give you a warning. It's a simple test, but it's there because we have it, it can be done. Yes. Oh, there's one more. What's the length of the reagent line, and how much space is all those reagents going to take? They're, they're, the length of the reagent, how much? About three feet. About three feet, and say, yeah, three feet, maybe, yeah, three feet. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still kind of working on that cradle that you'll have, but we're we're hoping to do something with uh, that looks nice and it has some kind of cable management, so you're not seeing all those reagent lines around, so it'll be nice and tight. Um, but it's three feet. Those reagents, as is, as I previously said, you cannot cut, you cannot modify those lines because if you do, then you take away the self priming from the machine. Okay. Any other questions? We have a chime in from the official Coral View uh, Hydros community group, and they are asking, it is a standalone unit, right? Yes, yes, it is a standalone unit. So you do not have to have a control four or a control two or something else. You can just grab this unit and plug it in there. So if you're thinking about hydros and you haven't pulled the trigger, but now this testing unit will, if you're thinking, oh, I mean, I'm gonna have to make this commitment and buy all this other stuff, you don't have to. You can buy this unit and do the testing. You can do simple dosing in there. And then if you like it, then you can add more stuff. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Yeah, I, I kind of mentioned it's, it's, it's really my decision. I could tell you it's ready to go now, but I'd really like to do, you know, a little more time just with our beta testers and 
you know, we got one shot to make this right is how I feel. I'm not, I'm not owned by corporate, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's one shot. I want to do it right. And it's not going to be long, you know, I would say worst case fourth quarter of this year, but it could very well be sooner. Yeah. yeah do it right. You know, that's what we, that's what we want to do. Do it right and make it easier, make it yep. better. Um, hold, go ahead. Sorry. We don't add that. Um, I think I went, you know, knowing the KH Guardian and the Alcatronic, uh, it's a great feature, but there's also a lot of limitations to it in terms of when everything works great, when you have a good test, it's fine. But if there's an error, it's really hard to pass that information from our machine to your controller to tell you there's an error. And uh, I've, again, I've dealt with that before with the Cage Guardian. I've dealt with the Alcatronic. And I, it, the feature is great. I love it. But it does, just like anything else, there's, or there, you, know, you can't have something that is everything. And that, to, to us, that was, a, that was something that I, that I felt that we didn't want to do. So that's what we didn't do. Um, uh, plus, everything is on the cloud. So yeah. maybe you'll have access. Maybe you don't. Again, just take it as you, you know. We have a lot of things in the pipeline that people, that, that people don't know. And believe me, people keep asking things. And we wish we could say, but we can't. And what we felt that this machine was something, it was the right time for us to do that. Um, you know, it's a question that we've gotten for so many, so many years. And uh, right. hold on, hold on. I got one in all the way in the back. Hold on, no, sir, all the way in the back. Uh, that will, uh, I, I wouldn't share that with, yeah, I'm gonna keep that to my, we're gonna keep that internally. You know, so good question though. Nice try. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I love it, sir. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. I, you know, I think if we had a prize for the best question, I'm going to go with yours. Yeah. That was good. It was good. <laughs> Any, okay. Are they available? They are here. We don't sell. We're distributors. The one thing that we are pretty big on is that we don't like to compete against our customers, customers, our partners. Exactly. So if you want to buy the minnow or the launch, there are several stores that are here that will sell it. So as soon as you walk in, you can go ahead and buy it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the um, some throws will come with depending on which version you purchase. Okay, so we have different different packs. We have pro packs. We have other packs. So depending on what you want, you can purchase it and purchase the probes. Uh, one thing that we do with hydros, and I don't want to get into too much, but it's for pH and conductivity. We use a standard BNC connector. So you can purchase it from us. So you can go to Amazon and purchase it. You can go and purchase a $100 conductivity probe, or you can spend $300 on a conductivity probe. As long as it has a BNC connector, you'll be able to use it. So we don't, we're not gonna lock you into a special connector that you can only purchase from us. That was the one thing that we did not wanna do. Any other questions? Well, thank you so yeah, much for coming. You. Thank you so much, we appreciate that. Good job. Thank you guys.